Based upon what data you have. I don't know. You're pulling stuff out of your posterior, aren't you? That's correct. There are spacecraft that are easier to work on. So you're learning how to take apart an Indy car. We got a Porsche to work on, that's cool. Yeah. And you got challenged to a duel. All things I didn't expect to happen this quickly. Yes. Oh, what's up people? We are back for, I think now, the second official Genius Garage video. And we are here with two out of three Genius Garage students right now. We've got Blaine dressed like a Smurf. Boom! On your left, yes. Actually, he's wearing some sort of contraband. Contraband? It's not contraband. This is like what happens when people go uh, to war somewhere and then come back with things they're not supposed to have. Maybe. Well done, you look great and in no way like a Smurf. Uh, also, on your right, we've got bro, do you even frack? Uh, Gavin, bro. why are you trying to ruin our lives with that shirt? Well, bro, I mean, like, fracking is a, is a big issue, man. I'm just trying to bring awareness to it from my eighth grade, uh, my eighth grade human geography teacher. Awareness to how profitable it is? Trolled! Yes, I just got canceled. Anyway, so today we're doing something really cool. We're giving these guys the opportunity to work officially on this indie car. Yes! And uh, it is a star-crossed, horrible machine. Yes, well done. <laughs> we, we did not script this, you guys, as you can tell. Anyway, it's star-crossed because originally it had this tiny two-point-some-odd liter Mercedes super expensive turbocharged methanol monster, which means it cooled better than it should have and made more power than it should have and was built like a brick outhouse. Um, and this particular pushrod Chevy engine is not. Um, and is not paired well to the gearing. Everything about it is a nightmare. We'll go into detail later. But long story short, the guys are ripping it apart, and that's why currently it looks like a fluffy dog that fell in a pond. So, uh, what do we got to do now? Because you guys are like jamming on this thing. Well, we just got to finish taking the final things off the motor, and then it's time to split it in half. That made it sound really easy and then really terrifying. Uh, I feel like, Gavin, you should save us. Well, okay, so to... It's not quite that simple. We need to keep finishing. Uh, we need to finish taking off a bunch of lines, cool lines, it's oil. It's simple if you're a smart Smurf in Nissan contraband. I'll have to explain to you know everyone else. I have oh, to, okay. I'm the interpreter. The oh, okay. Keep going. I'm sorry. So we have all the fluid lines to take off, then all the electrical connectors and the engine for uh, everything like ignition coils or fuel injectors and stuff. Um, just get all the cables and uh, uh, hoses off of the car. And then we will be able to just see the bare engine and transaxle and be able to uh, split the two halves of the car. That sounded good. Thank you. Yes. I didn't pay attention. We'll go watch the video again. I'm not doing it again. Should we just time lapse so people don't have to listen to us yap? Yeah, that's a better idea. Yes! Time lapse! Run away! <laughs> Driving race cars is fun, but it's difficult to source unobtainium parts and get the right engineering expertise. Since 1975, Taylor Race Engineering down in Texas has done just that. So whether you're looking for dog rings and straight cut gears for your road racing car, or you are on a college Formula SAE team and you guys need a chain drive differential and trapeze, this is the place you gotta call guys, or go to the internet at taylor-race.com. You can see a link in the description below, and I hope you enjoyed today's video.
how many times can I do that before I break myself, you guys? I give that you one a, more time. A couple. One more time. You give me one more time. One more time. A couple? A couple. You over there, frack man. That was your last one. Challenge accepted. Okay, guys, so we move this thing over here because apparently it's better to work on it over here. Why is it better to work on it over here? Well, it's out of the way in the middle of the shop. Yes, because we need to do shop things out there. And this back half needs to go that way. Yes, we need to explode it. Uh, also, why are we exploding this car? Well, because the engine's exploded. Engine oh, yes, the engine itself. did go kaboom, boom, boom on the inside. And apparently little pieces of metal are trying to escape from the oil pan now. This yes, that's bad. So what are we going to put back in there? Well, probably a K-series. Why K-series? Because it should fit, and uh, it's a lot more reliable than this, you know, great V8, but it's not very reliable. A Honda K-series, it's a Honda, it's not going to break. Okay, so here's, a, here's the deal, you guys. This is a, a 1997 Champ car. It's the year of the IndyCar split. So basically an IndyCar that was the year after there was a giant power-hungry money ego game that split American open-wheel racing in the 90s. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't tell the truth, but it's true. So the only difference between this car and an IndyCar from the year previous is it has a much more unreliable, annoying, transverse-mounted X-Track gearbox which is the bane of our existence because one, the auxiliary starting shaft is really weak and is prone to breakage, especially with a big motor like this. Also, um, it's geared for an engine that back in the day revved to 12,000 RPMs or more. So even with the tallest gears that we can put in this, we cannot get the top speeds that a pushrod Chevy is capable of with the power. And people are like, why don't you make new gears? Because they won't fit. There's no more room. This is engineered to the nines, people. Uh, which I think is good. I'm just pulling sayings out of the past. Yeah, I've got some new sayings I want to start using more. You do? Yes, I'm really fond of that's bananas. Okay, so anyway, so the K-series, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what is an engine that we can put in this car to make it more readily usable and better for you guys to teach with rather than being some sort of psychotic monster that requires a whole team of psychotic monsters keeping it going for a small amount of time before it blows up again. Right. So we want to make it more of a viable car and the K-series seems like the thing. Yes. Okay, so, but we aren't entirely sure yet that that will work until we take this thing apart. Right, because we're not too certain on the dimensions that we actually have to work with. What if we come to the conclusion that it's a bad idea? Well, we'll have to come up with what's a good idea. What would make us believe that a K-series engine could be a bad idea in here? Well, if we can't get the block to fit in between the transaxle and the monocoque with the uh, water pump and accessories on it, then we have to get a different engine because if it doesn't fit, you can't use it. Yeah, if you have to make the wheelbase longer, that's not really any helpful. I mean, you, you get to a point where it's silly. Yeah. Also, you guys, in all seriousness, one of the biggest constraints about this for everybody, by the way, if you comment, put in X, Y, or Z motor, I know you didn't watch the video to this point, okay? But here's the problem. In the original engine, the Mercedes that would have been in this, the center line of the crankshaft was so incredibly low in terms of where the engine sat to the ground because it had a very tight dry sump pan. So basically the revolution of the crankshaft was, we're talking maybe a half inch off yeah. the ground at that point with just like a layer of aluminum below it and a layer of carbon fiber. And by doing that, the center input, the center, you know, the input shaft of the transaxle is so darn low we can't actually put a normal flywheel on this thing to even start the car. Mm -hmm. And the clutch that fits in this, it has to be a five and a half inch diameter clutch. It's three disc. Yeah. You can't put a bigger one in it. There's no room in what is considered the bell housing of the transaxle. Um, and anything modifying by that point gets so extensive, you might as well just get a different car or at least a whole different rear end, at which point you got a different car. So those are the things to weigh. And I bring it up because there's a possibility that this transaxle in this combination might be so star-crossed by any reasonable motor that we could buy or remotely consider affording that maybe it's not a good project to even do. That's a possibility. What are we going to do if that happens? That's a great question. I tell you what, if it's a terrible idea, I will give my Chevron B16 body to Genus Garage and you guys can build a, like, a little endurance car Okay. if you want. What would you rather do, this or that? Well, I'd like to do this. Good. Because this is way more yeah. interesting. Okay. And you want to keep right. your body. Well, eh, no, I mean, I'd <laughs> like to see it do something, um, but I got my own thing going on. All right, so it's time to take it apart. Yep. Now, earlier, Buster was talking about your, uh, this kite you're wearing here. A kite? Yeah, well, it's made out of material from a kite or a parasail. Okay. Well, you look like one of those guys that hovers on a giant fan for fun. 
I can then, do that. Yeah, and then I said, you look like a Smurf, but it would be better if you had white shoes and a white hat on. Does somebody have a white hat? No. no. Sorry. Let me go buy a white hat? And then, uh, no, I could bring one. But then you said something of like, we wear hats for different reasons. The opposite reasons. What are those reasons that you think those are? Well, I got too much hair. And? Hey. Opposite of that. So you just assume I'm compensating. <laughs> Possibly. Oh! oh! I challenge you to a duel! Okay. Not foils, save us! We need more weaponry, bring all the weapons! God, people are gonna hate my video. Oh, we don't like Casey, he's a terrible uh, educator. Education is supposed to be boring and, and sterile in a room with people staring at a chalkboard and listening to somebody that hates them. Not by somebody who's funny and challenges people to duels. Yes, saber and foil! Wait, why'd you give me one with a blunted tip? Oh, we can fix that. So you're learning how to take apart an Indy car. We got a Porsche to work on, that's cool. Yeah. And you got challenged to a duel. All things I didn't expect to happen this quickly. Pretty great though, right? Yes. Awesome, time lapse! Check it out, people. The car is totally in two pieces. Yes, we have accomplished something today. Do you feel like you accomplished something today? I do. I feel like this is a great accomplishment that the whole world needs to know about. <laughs> I can't take you seriously. Gavin, <laughs> help me right now. We, we set out to achieve one thing today, and it was to take that transmission off of this car. And we did it. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with the work we've done. They know that. They can see it. Well, now they do, yeah. But, okay, next. You know. I want somebody else that might be. Oh, okay. oh bring it in, Smurf. Okay. Bring it in. What do you got? Say something well, really we, smart. We definitely got what we planned on doing today. If we plan on getting one part off a day, we'll be done the next day. Oh, God. By taking this engine off. Almost Everything there. you said was as obvious as like 1980s NASCAR commentary. Yeah. Just, you know what I'm saying? That's where Look at him going down the fairway real fast. I'm going to tell you all right now that the first guy gets the finish line is going to win this race. We have to say something <laughs> existential uh, and profound. Well, back in between the monocoque and the transaxle. Well, that sounded smart. Okay. So that's and a big word. Make it in integral or integral, depending on where you come from, to the structure of the vehicle. Yeah, the K series will be able to handle the stress. The issue is not. Hold on, what stress? The stress of holding the car together. Based upon what data you have. I don't know. You're pulling stuff out of your posterior, aren't you? That's correct. All right, we're going to go back over here. <laughs> come on, bring it home. What do you got that's intelligent? There's uh. smart people watching this. Well, There's also right. idiots watching this. We spend a lot Let's of time honest. doing this stuff, trying to be smart. So, you know, we get a little, a little will, worn out up top. We're really figuring out how everything went together, how everything was laid out that we had to disconnect, um, and figuring out, we kind of had to um, back engineer what was going on, how it was actually built, so we could figure out how to take it apart, what lines went where, and how they went through uh, different components to figure out um, 
you know, things like, well, what do we need to take off in this order to reach some other cable that's just kind of hidden or, uh, you know, figuring out where cables were run that made the most sense, meeting up with connectors that we had to kind of figure out or guess what they were, do research on the car, looking around, seeing what does this thing do? Where does it go? Fair enough. Was it uh, tricky figuring out the process for taking this apart? Honestly, I, I maintain that race cars, despite their complexity, are actually supposed to be simple to work on. They should be straightforward, that you should be able to look at it and be like, oh yeah, just these few things need to come off and it should come out. It might be a lot of things, but it should be relatively self-explanatory. Fair enough. I feel that this car is very self-explanatory. Is it? Because that's a lot of hoot. This is a lot of malarkey right here. Oh, they got look labels at on them. Pretty little labels. It's got pretty little labels, but look at all this. Look at this. Look at this. There are spacecraft that are easier to work on. What was the most surprising thing you found on this? The clutch is tiny. The clutch is tiny. It absolutely look at that. tiny. Four? Is it four and a half? Yeah, four and a half inches. Four it's about that big around about on that the side. Mm -hmm. That big. That is precision measuring. Okay. And ain't no way we're getting a flywheel in this thing. No, it doesn't look mm -hmm. like it. Nope. All right, well. Remote starter it is. Oh, wait. Maybe. Are we gonna measure stuff to figure out what engine we might be able to put in this now? Or do you gotta mm. get the engine out first? Well, think the, we know where the front of the engine is and now we gotta know where the back is, so. If this jack sags down tonight, is the whole car gonna go bloop like a boat that's sinking in the water or is it gonna be okay? Shouldn't. You shouldn't it based should. upon what data? Well, let's, we should put the crane on it just to be safe. The that sags sinks. too. The odds of two falling that amount no, the, the odds are. We should probably. Well, I'm not saying sagging. Hundred percent. Come back next time. We'll totally have the engine out and potentially figure out a new engine to put in it. Huge shout out to KW Suspension, guys. This year you're going to see beautiful coilovers such as this going on many of my cars, including my Porsche 944, my Dodge Viper, and even some of these crazy race cars. And the reason is simple. This is one of the best shock companies in the world. It was founded in Germany in 1992 by Klaus Wolfarth, and recently they just launched a new 1.2 million square foot robotic warehouse where they're creating unbelievably nice suspension components such as this for 15 different original equipment manufacturers. So whether you're a street enthusiast, a weekend track warrior, or you are building the Le Mans car your dreams, guys, check out KW Suspension unbelievably nice shock. So go down in the description below, patronize them. You're gonna be glad you did.